Today we're going to look at the TV show Hogan's Heroes, and more specifically, we're going to look at two characters from the show. One of them that had a terrible beginning, a terrible childhood, and then as he grew older and his career flourished, um, he rose up out of the ashes and made something of himself. The second one started out at a very high plane and descended down to a, uh, a, a terrible end. So let's take a look at both of these. Hogan's Heroes is a sitcom from the 60s that actually ran from September of 1965 to uh, April of 1971. And it's based in a, a prisoner of war camp. And it's about these group of prisoners that continually create havoc among the dim-witted German soldiers that, are, are, uh, that have them under capture. Some of the characters on the show are Colonel Hogan, who's the primary character that's in this show, then you've got Colonel Klink, uh, you've got Sergeant Schultz, um, you've got Sergeant Carter, you've got uh, Louis LeBeau, and you've got uh, Corporal Peter Newark. Those are just some of the characters that are on the show that you became so familiar with. Now, the show was actually shot, the uh, exterior scenes were shot on the 40 acres back lot in Culver, Culver City, uh, the same area where the Andy Griffith show was shot and also Gone with the Wind. Uh, the Real McCoys was shot there. Um, it doesn't exist anymore, uh, but it, uh, it was a popular area during the 50s and 60s for uh, sitcoms. Now, the two characters that we're going to look at today, uh, one of them was played by Robert Clary. He played Corporal Louis LeBeau. And then we're going to also look at Bob Crane. He was the lead character and he played Colonel Robert Hogan. So let's take a look at Robert Clary first. Now Robert was born in 1926 in Paris, France. Uh, he was the youngest of 14 children. At the age of 12, he began uh, singing uh, professionally on a French radio show, and he also studied uh, at the Paris Drawing School. But in 1942, because he was Jewish, he was deported to a Nazi concentration camp. He actually has tattoos on his arm still to this day, I'm assuming, that identify him on his left forearm. It reads A5714. While he was interred at Birkenwald concentration camp, he sang to the audiences of SS soldiers every Sunday. He actually says that the singing that he did, and because he was in good health, it allowed him to, to actually survive his experience at this concentration camp. Uh, when they first got there, they shoved him into a shower to spend the night. And he had heard rumors that they were dumber sh dummy showers and that they had gas jets in it. He thought to himself, this is it. It's just a place to go to sleep and it would be all over. He says that the first eight days, the Germans didn't give him anything to eat, that they were hanging on to life just by pure guts. They were sleeping on top of each other and every morning waking up finding a new corpse next to him. He still says to these, this day he wakes up dreaming that he's being sent to a concentration camp. I guess that's the kind of thing that just never leaves your mind. Now Clary was liberated from the concentration camp on April of 1945. Twelve other members of his immediate family were sent to Auschwitz. Uh, Clary was the only member of the family to survive the camps. When he returned to Paris after the war, 
he learned that three of his uh, 13 siblings had not been taken to concentration camps and had actually survived uh, in Nazi-occupied France. Now, Cleary returned to the entertainment business um, shortly after after his release and began singing songs that, that not only became popular in France, but in the United States as well. His comedic skills were quickly recognized by Broadway, and he appeared in several musicals. In 1965, though, he was offered the role as Corporal Louis Laveau on the TV show Hogan's Heroes. After Hogan's Heroes went off the air, still remained close friends with, with the rest of his cast on, on the show. Uh, he also went on to uh, a career where he was in a lot of um, soap operas like Days of Our Lives, Young and the Restless. He spent a lot of time traveling Canada and the United States speaking about the Holocaust. He's also a painter and he's continually painting from photographs that he takes on his travels. He wrote a book called From the Holocaust to Hogan's Heroes. At the time of this recording, he's still alive. I'm assuming he, is, he still lives in L.A. He's one of the few members of the cast that is still alive. Now, the next one we're looking at is Bob Crane. Uh, Bob was born in Connecticut, and he started playing drums at a really young age. Um, he was really talented, and um, he graduated from uh, Stanford High School in 1946. Then he, shortly after that, he um, enlisted in the Connecticut National Guard. He married his high school sweetheart, Ann, and they had three children. In the 1950s at WLEA in New York, he was a disc jockey and a very, very popular disc jockey. He made his mark in this, and some of his programming is the way he, he did his shows is still used to this day. He went on to be in the Donna Reed show. He actually was considered as, as a possible star instead of Johnny Carson, uh, he was looked at and, and thought to be one that, that might fill those, those shoes. Now, he went on to do Hogan's Heroes, and he was this was a popular show, and he became uh, a real hit after that. But after the show was over, he, um, he kind of hit the doldrums, uh, as so many of the Hollywood people do, and he had to take to uh, doing dinner theater type stuff to stay busy. He was continually traveling and, and doing that circuit of dinner theater. In June of 1978, he was living in the Winfield Place Apartments in Scottsdale, Arizona. This is during a time when he was uh, at a dinner theater there doing beginner's luck. On the afternoon of June 29th, uh, Crane's co-worker, Victoria Ann Berry, entered his apartment after he failed to show up for a lunch meeting and discovered his body. He had been bludgeoned to death with some type of weapon that they never really identified, but they thought that it was probably a camera tripod. Some of the pallbearers at his funeral were his fellow co-stars from Hogan's Heroes. He's buried at Westwood Village in L.A. Well, these are the two stars that we wanted to look at, and their lives began and ended in totally different ways. Well, I guess Robert Clary has, has not ended, but uh, the latter part of his life was on a much more upbeat note as opposed to Bob Crane's. But I want to thank them so much for giving us uh, the laughter that they provided uh, during this show, Hogan's Heroes. Thanks for watching.